is a flat screen CRT TV. Some people say they don't work on flats. Fuck, I missed. Got an old school curvy tube. What the fuck? It actually worked? What? Well, now it ain't working. I actually got a shot in plasma. Nineteen seventy four twenty seventy two neutron TV curves only on one axis and a projector that's not in the best shape, but hey, let's see if it'll do it. Hmm. This projector is built around eight hundred by six hundred, so it is doing scaling. Before we get started with this, I figured I'd tell you how the light gun works in duck hunt and why that light bulb trick everybody says works doesn't. Uh, when you pull the trigger, there's a black flash, and then a black with a white uh, square, and then a, a black again. Then it goes back to the thing. Um, so the, the, the reason why there's two blacks is so it's like an anti-cheat thing. So it's not just looking for the light. It's got two blacks as a reference. And the delay, if it pushes the frame, if it pushes the time so far forwards that the black's landing on the white square time, or even further than that, well, then it's not going to detect it correctly. And capturing this, I had a really hard time doing because my only camera that goes above 30 FPS is my webcam. And I don't have any software that can capture that without dropping frames. Shadowplay was how I tried to get it, and Shadowplay still likes to drop frames. The reason why the CRTs never fail and all these other display types are failing is because CRTs are really simple in design. There's an analog composite signal going in, or even the RF signal, which can be broken down into a composite signal. Everything can be filtered out and manipulated with very simple parts. Nothing's processed. Very simple and straight to the point. Now, when you look at plasmas and LCDs, they have a set number of pixels on the screen, but besides that, they are entirely digital. The signals they take are digital, so if you've got an analog signal, that has to be converted to a digital format it can understand through, an act, like, everything is processed on it. Now, on top of that, these games are coming in at 320 by 240 progressive scan, and they want 1080p. And uh, so they got to upscale it on top of that. That's even more processing time. So uh, that, that, that decreases your latency massively. I'd be curious if I only had to deal with the analog to digital conversion, if it would be playable with Duck Hunt. Also, how our old tubes versus our flat panel modern day screens put out an image are so different. The old school tubes have an electron beam that is dragged across the screen by a magnetic field, drops it down a line, drags it across, drops it down a line. That line can go wherever it wants, so the resolutions are dynamic. You've got a little grill that sets the detail of your color, but as far as uh, you can have your image wherever you want, it's going to look good. Now, flat panels, they do a thing called multiplexing. So, say you're doing your times tables like you do in middle school or whatever, and they got you that little chart thing, and, you know, you take, like, a three, you go down row three, and you go down row five, and that'll do three by five, and that would get you 15. Uh, same type of thing, but uh, that, that, uh, where that 15 would be, that would be your pixel lighting up, and the three and the five would be your voltages. One of the big downsides of this, though, is you have a set number of pixels on the screen. So if you have something running in a different resolution, it has to be scaled to your resolution, and it's going to look like crap when you scale it. On a side note, on the LCD side of things, I wish I had one to compare with, but the LCD panels don't respond as quickly as other display types. 
Also, I know the S's and stuff on my microphone are sounding pretty harsh right now, and you can hear my breath, but it's because I'm talking quiet because it's six in the... Holy shit, it's six in the morning? But, yeah, uh, and my microphone, I need to glue down the little diaphragm thingy because it popped out and I'm out of super glue. In the amount of time it took me to do the auto scan so I could get channel 3 to come up on that TV, I got this far in Mario. And yes, I did use the warp pipe, but still. Let's see how hard it is to get the channel 3 in here. Wow. Damn. That took a lot of time. I would have tested everything at once, but my setup ended up being more complicated than I wanted. So the RF jack from out of here goes into the VCR, obviously, which is actually using a Sega Genesis uh, switch. <laughs> And the RCAs go into the plasma's front, and there's an RCA out in the back, which luckily did not add to the latency, at least not enough to affect Dunt Hunt. So I uh, hooked it up to this TV through the front, <coughs> excuse me, through the front, and uh, out the VCR. Had this cable here, which I found a splitter, and I was hoping I could find another one so I could test all this at once, but I couldn't. <sighs> and I would have tried just like splicing some RCA cables together, but it makes the picture dimmer, and that bugs me because. How are these TVs going at the same time? You know, I want to show you what their pictures really look like, too. I mean, I know it's not the point, but I don't want my CRTs looking weak and dim. And this has a bad DLP chip. Or it is somebody would probably be using this.